Hey everybody, happy Star Wars Day. Today is May the 4th, 2016, and I am uploading this video because I wanted to tell the story um, of what Star Wars means to me and how much Star Wars means to me. I'm a huge, huge, huge Star Wars fan, uh, which is very obvious if you look at any of my YouTube videos or follow me on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, Star Wars in the past year has been much more intense than I ever expected it to be, uh, and I got to do some really mind-blowing, crazy opportunities, um, and I think I, I, I'm kind of making this for, like, little me. So, little Cory um, got Star Wars on VHS, I think, when I was maybe seven or eight years old. My, my parents got them for me for Christmas, um, and I, rem I remember watching Star Wars for the first time, and I was so insanely obsessed. So as I grew up, I got into things like Star Wars books, and Star Wars comics, and Star Wars action figures, and Star Wars video games, and then they were making episodes, uh, they were making the prequel trilogy, episodes one, two, and three. For three years, I very closely followed the making of episode one, and then it came out, and then they started making episode two. That became important because I have since realized in my 20s that I learned a lot about filmmaking by following the making of those movies, but I, I, I didn't think I was interested in filmmaking. I was just a hardcore Star Wars fan, and I was like 10, 12 years old. And as I got into computers throughout high school, I would like Photoshop pictures of me to try to make it look like a real lightsaber. And so I went to all of my friends at high school saying, we should make a, a, a lightsaber fight. And we ended up working on it for an entire year. So across 2003 and 2004, me and my friends made this fan film called Ring War Reloaded, which is a combination of Lord of the Rings and Star Wars and The Matrix Reloaded. And it was this action sequence that we shot at my high school. And at first, a lot of people were making fun of me. Because you're in high school, and I was like pretty dweeby looking, and I was at high school, like, wearing, like, a Jedi outfit, and in the hallway swinging lightsabers. But as we were working on the film, and as the year progressed, the people that were making fun of me at the beginning of the year, by the end of the year, were like, hey, that's actually pretty cool, like we teased Corey and we bullied him and he didn't care and now he like made a movie and at the end of grade 12 when everybody was going off to college or university I decided I wanted to get into filmmaking but like working in television and film didn't really interest me so thank god YouTube came out so back in 2006 after I joined YouTube I, I put Ring Wars Reloaded on YouTube and made a bunch of videos some about Star Wars some not and then it was in 2008 that I uploaded a video called Star Wars Acapella John Williams is the man uh, I've, I've documented and explained and vlogged the entire story behind that. If you want to hear that, that's in a video I have called My YouTube Story. But that video went viral and it got millions of views in a month and it it changed my life. It saved my life and I was able to get out of living the life that I was living, which was pretty rough at the time and I didn't have any money at all, and pursue YouTube and do that full time, uh, which was super cool and amazing and life changing and I owe the, the luck of my entire life and career to that Star Wars video. Uh, and so as, as I was making money off of that video and I got to be a full-time YouTuber, I took that money and reinvested it back into making YouTube videos, and then a lot of those were Star Wars videos, which I ended up making a lot of with my friend Wheezy Waiter, uh, Craig Benzine. He's a fellow YouTuber, and we met at this event called VidCon, so Craig and I ended up making a bunch of them. Like, basically every year, we did lightsaber fight after lightsaber fight after lightsaber fight. Now, it is important to say that with, with, with this massive, radical love for Star Wars. We're living in a time now where Disney owns Star Wars, but back then they didn't. Star Wars Episode Three came out in 2005, so now it's 2000, what, 2009, 10, 11, 12, and I'm like obs still obsessed, desperately clinging onto this obsession with Star Wars. And my entire YouTube channel and everything, my whole career is all based off of this Star Wars love. Okay, so in October of 2012, I remember this 
vividly. We were on set. We had this Death Star set, and I was dressed like an Imperial officer, and we're literally shooting a Star Wars video. And right as we're getting ready to record, my Twitter just explodes, and thousands of people are just tweeting at me within seconds of one another saying, Corey, did you hear the news? Disney just bought Star Wars. I said to Joel, um, uh, make, make sure this is true. And I said to Corrado, hit record. And so we're rolling, and I had just found out. Urgent and important announcement. And, and we got to capture me finding out. Uh, there's gonna be more Star Wars. Um. So I'm thrilled, right? I am pumped for more Star Wars, but I never could have predicted what happened next. In early 2014, I get this email from Lucasfilm making a request from us saying, hey, if you were given the opportunity to shoot on the official Lucasfilm Cantina set, what would you shoot? Do you have any ideas? Do you have any concepts? And so my mind it, 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 it explode with uh, ideas and concepts and nerves and we have to, my team and I have to prepare this formal proposal to send to Lucasfilm with concepts on what we're gonna do. Now, because we had shot so many previous Star Wars videos, we put on our proposal, look at our previous work. And so we send it off to them and we wait. And we wait. And I remember specifically, we even vlogged it, um, getting the email from Lucasfilm saying that we got it and that we were gonna go and shoot an official video from Star Wars and that we couldn't tell anybody. I'm really, really, really excited. And I didn't wanna not capture this moment. <laughs> so we're gonna be able to share it with you guys really soon, but it's one of the best emails I've ever gotten in my entire life. And so we started working with Lucasfilm to create this video for May the 4th, uh, two years ago, uh, May 4th, uh, 2014, uh, and make this official, actual, cool Star Wars Cantina video. Star Wars! Man, filming that video, like, what an incredible experience. It's still, it's still hard to believe. And after shooting, we had, we got to edit the video for a couple months and do all of the effects. How does it feel? Being the j biggest Star Wars nerd in the world, is that a good thing? You don't want to be known no, as a Star Wars nerd. I, I'm honored. Oh, are you? Is that yeah, a good thing? Okay. I mean, he's creating a piece of work <laughs> here on the Star Wars set. Okay, let's get a position. See if you can grab the cup. I know it's really freaking possible. <laughs> and we actually got to license John Williams' music on my YouTube channel. Take a drink, and I want you to think That's about That's your chin. I have this viral video called John Williams is the Man, and now I actually have John Williams' music officially in one of my YouTube videos. We have some ideas. There's gonna be ext extras like throughout this entire thing. So we're gonna be fighting around them. We'll be starting on the other side of the bar. I throw him to, into the table. He gets up, we face off, we fight throughout. As they start there wide, kind of being tight on us, right. and then pull back to reveal like us being straight at each other. The next moves. All right. Oh boy, I got it. We can grab her. She. There's no words to describe that. It's just a thrill, it's just a joy. I've hit the point of delirium, and it's only up from here. To, to, to tell my eight-year-old self, like one day you are gonna be that Jedi. One day you get to go to Tatooine and have a lightsaber fight and wear the costumes and have me there with aliens, like. It's, it's really, it's really, 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 really cool. It's, I feel so good that I finally get to share those. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up because I'm sweating and I am way too excited. Okay, so uh, 2015 now, we're pretty much caught up. Uh, two, a million really cool uh, things happened. I got to be one of the official hosts for Star Wars Celebration Live in Anaheim. Uh, and I got to interview a bunch of like the cast and crew and I got to meet Mark Hamill and I got to uh, interview Billy D. Williams it was this four day long live stream. It was like 10 hours a day, four days in a row. And I was one of the hosts and that was live streamed on youtube.com slash Star Wars. I got to go to Star Wars weekends at Disney World, uh, which w was incredible. Uh, they brought me out and I, got, I, I had never been before. And that was, that was awesome. And then in November, 2015, one month before Star Wars episode seven came out, Disneyland had this big updated launch for Star Wars stuff. And they brought me to the, the, the premiere premiere 
today and I got to go to like uh, Tomorrowland and I want to see all the Star Wars stuff first and go on Star Tours first. Uh, and episode seven was so close and it, ah, uh, it, guys, it was, it's so cool. I don't know how else to describe it and I don't want to sound like I'm bragging. I'm just so, <laughs> so freaking thrilled. Uh, it's, who would have thought that I could be this kid as an adult? I'm just, I'm, I'm, I get to be a big kid. Uh, and, and then, and then the final part of the story is I got to go to the world premiere of Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens in Hollywood. I got to walk the red carpet. I got to meet a bunch of celebrities. I got a photo with Carrie Fisher, and I got to go to the premiere screening and be in the room when they premiered the movie with the cast and the crew, everybody was there. And the cherry on top is uh, one of the coolest and most unexpected things that has ever happened to me in my entire life. After the screening, uh, I went out into the lobby and the movie had just ended and we were all waiting to get uh, our stuff back and there was a big crowd leaving and I ended up side by side with J.J. Abrams. Yeah. I, just, I, I just saw the movie, it, it was incredible uh, and I didn't cry and then I met J.J. Abrams and he said he's he's right over he's right over there. I, ju I just met him, and he said he has seen my YouTube videos before, and he really likes them. So there's really no words. It's just that I can't, what do you what do you do with that? It's um, <laughs> um wow. Well, that's if what well, it's. It's been quite the ride. Uh, it's been really incredible. Um, um, you know, my YouTube story, which is in a separate video, um, YouTube's been really crazy and Star Wars has been really crazy and I just, I can't imagine telling the eight-year-old Cory, the kid playing the video games or, or reading the books or the comics, that one day I might actually be involved uh, in that world and know people and meet people and 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 still love it as much as i do um 20 years later I, if not more is star wars is you know it's one of the defining parts of my life um and and that's been unfolding in real time um on on youtube across my youtube channel and um and so i just wanted to 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 share this to to share my star wars story um and, and thank you guys, and thank Lucasfilm and Disney, and Star Wars is great, and I look forward to many more years, a lifetime of being a fan and, and, and pouring creative passion and energy and love into it. Um, you guys are great. Thank you. And may the Force be with you.